Hello everybody, and welcome to my video on what is basically a precursor for the let's play that I plan on doing for Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. So, uh, sometime last week, I decided that I wanted to do a let's play on these two games. Um, these were massive games from my childhood, um, and basically the nostalgia hit me, and I just wanted to play them again. So, I already had a PS2 emulator, PCSX2. I thought, okay, I'll get home and I can run M2 games on the emulator, no problem. Um, got onto the emulator and started it up. And I came across what many of you who stumble across this video have probably come across, which will be the half screen bug. So basically when you start the emulator up, uh, the game starts to run, gets to the menu screen, and then it's only showing half the screen. It only displays half the screen. Um, I was pretty gutted by that. Um, obviously I wanted to play this uh, play this game pretty badly for a let's play and I didn't know if there was going to be a way around that so after a lot of digging I did find to manage to find a half screen fix and when that got sorted I, uh, I then started playing the game and it started to crash on me so uh, I knew there was some more trouble there so that'll lead me on to the other thing that I intend to do, which will be run you through the 4GB patch which stops crashes taking place. Um, once I got all that sorted out, the game was running on full screen and with the patch installed there was no crashes, but I was getting absolutely horrible uh, frame drops in basically crowded indoor areas, uh, such as the main bar when you start the game and places like that. So after about three days of tinkering, I finally got round to figuring out some settings that worked for me. So I'll then be talking you through those settings and hopefully they'll be able to help you and get you sorted on that. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is sort of the origin of where this comes from. So the origin of this bug really is what's called the Snowblind engine, which all these games ran on on PS2. So the games that are affected by this are Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance 1 and 2, which are the two games I want to be playing, Champions of Norath, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, A Bard's Tale, Champions Return to Arms, Combat Elite, World War II Paratroopers, and Justice League Heroes. These are all on the Snowblind engine, and they all suffer the same half-screen bug and crashes. Uh, and that's to do with the way that they use sort of a, a double rendering system to get the best pos possible quality out of the games. Uh, and they are actually pretty good looking games still, so uh, I can see why they did that. It just makes it a, pa makes it a pain to emulate. So before we get started, um, as you can probably see the specs on my screen currently, um, it's a HD 7900 series graphics card. It's actually a 7970 GHz edition. Uh, an i5 3570K, and I've got that running at 4.4 gigahertz. And uh, yeah, ignore 3.4, that's just the base clock. And I'm running on a Z77X UD3H motherboard. So that's what I'm actually running this system on. So if you're trying to get this working uh, and your specs aren't quite as good as that and you're not getting the same results that I do, that may be the reason for that. So, um, Basically, the, the half screen fix, what you'll want to do is I'm actually going to pop up a sort of link on the top left of the screen now to a video that I found, um, which is basically a developer version of the PCSX2 um, emulator that you'll need to install in order to get this half screen bug fixed that will allow you to play on hardware mode. You could play on software mode before and it'd get rid of the half screen bug, but these games are an absolute pig to emulate, so you wouldn't be able to play properly uh, on that on that full screen mode uh, as running in software mode. You do need it in hard mo hardware mode to run this game, really. So um, the link that you've got on the screen now, if you follow that, that'll take you to uh, basically a YouTube video that I found, uh, and also pop a link in the description. If you follow the instructions in them videos in that video. Sorry. Um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to the description where there'll be a link to the the basically download that you need, and then just underneath that there'll be a section that says this is the version that I'm currently using. Copy that version, and then once you're on the web page that the link opens up, hit Control and F to run Find, 
uh, and then you just want to paste that into the find box and then you'll be able to find the exact version that this works on that's the version i'm using currently so that's probably your best bet to go with that one um, I'll just see if I can expand it. So it's the one that ends in GC753FOD. That's the one that I'm using, using, but if you follow the instructions in that video, um, I'm sure that'll uh, help you out with that. So once you've installed that and got it all set up, you'll then have the half screen bug fixed. You'll be able to run it in uh, basically full screen mode and you'll be able to see the entire screen. Um, however, you then may run into some crashes so what you'll need to do is you'll need to install uh, what is basically this patch here, which is a four gigabyte patch, and that just runs on the actual, actual executable. So you'll need to run that patch and run it on the executable, and that'll allow, allow it to use more RAM. I've got, as you can see here, 16 gigs of RAM installed, uh, and what that will actually do is it'll allow it to use more than four gigabytes of RAM, um, which means it won't run out of memory and the game won't crash. So once you've got them two installed, uh, there will be a link up on the screen now as to uh, where you can find that four gigabyte patch and the instructions for using that as well. Once you've got that all sorted, you'll then want to get the game actually running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the settings that I currently use. So the settings that I've got at the moment, the first one is the settings here. So your Emotion Engine, you want it as Recompiler, IOP, Recompiler, chop stroke zero and then clamping mode none vus is these are all basically the standard ones that it comes set as but it's macro vu macro vu chop slash zero and then normal in the clamping mode the gs which is where i've started to make changes is as you can see down here i've actually got it set to constant skipping now with these settings in low population areas, it will run at a constant 50 FPS without the skipping, but I run it as skipping as I'll show you the difference between the two in a minute when I start that up. Um, but for the moment, I'll actually set that as disabled uh, for when I initially start the game up so you can see that. GS window, um, these are basically just the same settings that were already set when you get the emulator. And I've actually turned speed hacks off completely and it still runs nice and fast, so you don't need them at all. So that's in the emulation settings. Next one you want to go to is go to video and then plugin settings. And actually, just to show you, um, you actually, when you are on the BIOS selector, you want to make sure that this is the version of the, of the sort of renderer that you're using which is the SSS E3 version. Um, and if you click on there, there's a few different ones you can pick, but you want the SSS E3 version. That's the one that uh, everything seems to be running smoothly for me on. So once you've done that, you'll go on to video and plugin settings. You want to select your video card there. And then on interlacing, I've gone with blend TFF slight blur. And I'm actually running it at three times native resolution, so it does look really nice. Um, the renderer that you want to use, you want to use the direct 3D11 hardware version. And you want to basically enable all these boxes that you can see that I've got enabled. Enable hardware hacks. Um, I've just got that skip draw set to four, although it doesn't really do a great deal, so that doesn't matter. And the extra rendering threads I've got set as three. The reason for that, I've got a quad-core processor, so if I do end up using software mode, which I don't use at all, um, I've got that extra free, free cores for my CPU to help with the rendering. So it'll use one as default, and then the extra free it'll actually uh, use if I'm in software mode, so it's running on all four cores. So I'll show you the results of all that config now. So if I boot this, uh, I'll just boot as the fast version. So this is with the, the frame skipping turned off. So as you can see at the top here, you're aiming for 50 FPS, uh, which is the sort of native refresh rate of PS2. So if I start the game up, and I'll just need to load a save file. Um, yeah, I played through about an hour and a half of the game just to make sure it was all running smoothly before I start my playthrough. And here you can 
obviously this will be opening cinematic, but we'll uh, we'll skip all, skip all that. So we'll find out to the load save game. And just keep an eye on that FPS counter. So in this area, um, I'm actually running at full 50 FPS without any trouble. Um, I can switch to my bow. So use magic and I don't get any sort of frame drops at all. Um, so this area is great, everything runs nice and smoothly. The problem that I was having however was when I actually got into town it was dropping sub substantially to about 30 FPS in some areas. So as you can see when I get into this bar area it actually drops to about 33 FPS and because the actual speed of the game is tied to the FPS, it runs quite slowly, so that was something that I didn't really want to have to deal with. I wanted it running at full start, full speed all the time. Um, it's playable, don't get me wrong, but it's just not the sort of best way to run it I found. So as you can see, that's sort of the, the video running at them settings that I've showed you currently. And then if we close that, the settings that I'm actually going to be using for the playthrough, if we go back onto config and emulation settings, go to GS, and if we enable constant skipping, now I'll show you what that changes. Now just a warning before I do to boot this up, it does mess up the starting menu of the game. Um, it'll flash extremely quickly, so if you are sensitive to that, I do suggest you don't sort of watch this as it does flicker really fast. Uh, and that is a result of it rendering one frame, skipping one frame, rendering one frame, skipping one frame. It just messes the menu up. I'm guessing they use some sort of, you know, um, because the menu is dynamic and you can scroll through it, I'm guessing it refreshes at a different rate to the background image, and that's what causes that. So if we reboot this now. Now, this is pretty much the only downside uh, that I can see to running it on this one frame on, one frame not frame off mode. Um, but I honestly think it's worth the sort of drawback. You can still use the menu. It just doesn't look very appealing to start with. You do get some sort of rendering flickers there. So you can see, it doesn't look great at the moment, but as soon as you get into game, actually run just fine so get into the game now and we're back in this area that I was in before it doesn't look quite as smooth uh, due to the fact that you're basically running at half the frame rate but it does run more than adequate it still plays fine uh, it doesn't affect the gameplay at all it all still looks pretty good really um, and then if I recall and go back to the bar Whereas it was dropping to 30 FPS in this area of the room before, I'm running at a constant 50 FPS. So no frame drops at all. I've also tested this in some of the other games, Baldur's Gate 2, etc. Uh, and it still runs absolutely fine. Um, the frame skipping doesn't affect the dialogue at all. Welcome back. It st still Something sounds fine. Um, it still looks pretty good. Um, Word is so... No it doesn't affect anything like that. The old guild it's just the sort of menus Work. at the start that you'll have trouble with. And also it doesn't look quite as smooth, but it does still look more than playable. So if you are having issues with this game or any of the slow, Snowblind engines, uh, I would suggest sort of doing that. Now there is another way that you can run the game, as I was saying before, which is in the software mode. Uh, however, I find that to be a lot worse than hardware mode, so that can just be done here. You can select 3D11 software instead, and that won't use your graphics card, it'll use your CPU for the processing. Um, so if you've got a really good processor but not a very good graphics card, it may be a better way of doing it for you. Um, but if you've got sort of a decent graphics card, it's going to be better to run it in hardware mode. You're going to get less of them sort of um, slowdowns. But the sort of the key config that I found is definitely the constant skipping. And if you set it to draw one frame, skip one frame, you won't get any of the bouncing around that you sometimes get with frame skips. It'll still run pretty smooth. 
um, but it'll allow you to hit that constant FPS and you won't get any frame drops. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll just pop um, basically two videos up on the screen. One with it running with frame skip and one with it running without, and you'll be able to see um, basically side by side the way that they look and also how one drops in speed when you get into that area and the other one doesn't. So thank you for watching today. If you have had any trouble with these Snowblind games, I hope this helps out uh, and feel free to keep tuned uh, for the the playthroughs of Baldur's Gate 1, well, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and 2 that I plan on doing uh, fairly soon in the future.